good evening. Whenever you're joining us, welcome. This is the Appreciative Recovery Show. We believe that curiosity, self-compassion, and connection are foundational values that if cultivated as a daily practice, make any path toward wellness filled with joy and wonder. My name is Kelly Knox and I am the host of this show. Today we will be talking about Buddhism and how cultivating the skill of letting go provides the space for deeper connection. Today's guest is Mark Nelson. He is a Zen Soto priest and founder of Sweeping Heart Zen here in Gloucester. He has taken vows in the lineage streams of both Taizan Maizumi Roshi and Shunri, Shunryo Suzuki Roshi. For nearly 30 years, Mark has explored how to manifest the Buddhist teaching in everyday life. So welcome, Mark. It's really nice to be here, Kelly. It's nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you, and I really appreciate you taking the time for this. Yeah, thanks. Um, so Sweeping Heart Zen has been uh, providing a spiritual place in Gloucester for how many years? Um, we've been here. I've been teaching in Gloucester for about three years now. About three yeah. years. So, um, yeah. And we've been at uh, the Gloucester um, Unitarian Universalist Church for about a year and a half now. A we year have a, and a half. We have a rented room yeah. there yeah. that we've set up as a, a, a meditation space and a space to um, hold our teachings. Yeah, 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 and it's a really nice space. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so tell us a little bit about why you founded it and um, where the name came from. Yeah, so... Um, well, I'm a Soto Zen priest, uh, and so um, part of my vows as a priest uh, includes um, spreading the teachings of uh, the Buddha. So I founded it uh, in order to facilitate spreading the teachings of the Buddha as I understand them and as uh, they're taught in the Soto Zen tradition. And um, Uh, it's just a, a, a wonderful opportunity to be able to provide this for, for people. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how did you find your way to Gloucester? Uh, I grew up in Beverly, okay. uh, and I left Beverly in 1974, really never expecting to come back to the North Shore. Uh, but uh, during the last years of my mom's life, I came back to help out with her care. I, I helped my sister uh, with my mom's care. and. Um, I ended up making connections again, and I ended up doing some teaching uh, in Salem, uh, teaching English as a second language actually in Salem, and I was uh, doing some volunteer teaching uh, with uh, adult programs, helping people get their um, math uh, high school equivalency uh, accomplished, and I just started meeting friends and uh, making new friends and meeting people, and, and uh, it turned into... Um, uh, what I think is a, a, a very good situation yeah, for, yeah. for the rest of my life. Oh, know? really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. I, I'm actually quite glad that you guys, that you came here and that you started yeah, the... Yeah, thanks. The, um, so you write a blog pretty much monthly? No, I try to publish uh, every other week. Every, yeah, so I, twice I notice a month, it a sometimes, sometimes more. More, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. I notice it coming across my email and yeah, popping yeah. up on, on Facebook. But the, I, I don't know if this was the last one you wrote, but it's called um, Be a Buddha. I might get these names wrong. Dogen Zenji on life and death. Yeah, Dogen Zenji. Dogen Zenji. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, is it okay if I read the first paragraph of that? Oh, right. sure. Um, whenever and wherever I can, I try to let go of or at least question my well-worn thoughts and opinions. I also try to come unglued from my habitual knee-jerk reactions. I try to let go because if I'm holding on, if I'm bound by habit and reactivity, I'll be sure to miss the breathing, pulsing changes of life happening in every moment. And if I miss what's happening now, I'm surely bound to add to the suffering of the world. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit. I love that. And, oh, and, and, and the rest yeah. of the post, and you know, we'll give the audience your um, yeah. website address at the end so oh, that wonderful. they can check it all out. But yeah, yeah. tell me a little bit about, about that. So, uh, 
I mean, it's really, it's really quite simple, um, and, and most people understand this. Um, so if I'm, if I'm talking, uh, I'm coming from my understanding, I'm coming from my knowledge, and it's a very different place, it's a very different kind of mental posture, inner posture to be talking like I am right now rather than to be listening, mm -hmm. right? If I'm listening, then my posture changes. I'm open, right? If I'm truly listening and not um, uh, pretending to be listening while I prepare a response, but if I'm setting myself aside and my own response aside and listening, then I'm building a bridge to you and I'm present. I have to be present. So this kind of letting go of what I know, mm. right? And letting go of the mental chatter of a response and just being open and present means that I can actually respond. I can actually um, build a bridge uh, of understanding and empathy. Mm -hmm. So um, this, is, this is what we mean by letting go. Letting, letting go of our preconceptions about what's happening and just being present to what's happening. Um, and um, it's a skill we can cultivate and it's a skill that's important um, in every dimension of my life. So um, this is, and this is a big part of our training. Um, we can we can actually become better listeners and better. We can become better and better, uh, constantly better at letting go mm -hmm. of um, our preconceptions, our reactivity, our defensiveness, our knowing. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, this yeah. is a little different than you know, for many years, more mm -hmm. than I'd like to say. People have said, been saying, and I've heard, you know, you just need to let go. You just yeah. need to let go. And so in the context of either your relationship or a circumstance, like, I'm always thinking outside. Yeah. I need to let go of this. Mm. I need to let go of that. But what you're talking about is you can take care of that kind of letting go by doing an internal letting go. I'll give you an example. Okay. So um, we have a board, and uh, something that we'd like to do every, uh, every year is send a, a thank you letter um, to our contributors and donors. And so I drafted a letter, and I met with the board, and I thought this was a super duper thank you letter, you know, acknowledging um, the membership dues contributions and donations of people who've made those kinds of uh, gifts to Sweeping Hearts End. And I brought the, uh, the draft and I emailed the draft to the other board members. And when I got to the meeting, I was surprised because the other board members had actually had ideas about how the letter could be improved, <laughs> <laughs> which I'd solicited. But I, you know, uh, I was pretty uh, attached to the form and content of the letter. Now, on a number of occasions, as the board members offered their contributions for improving the letter, I felt this tightening inside, right? I didn't really, I wasn't really committed initially to hearing how it could be made better. And so my practice allowed me to feel that tightening as an opportunity to let go, mm -hmm. rather than as an opportunity to dig in, mm -hmm. right? So it's what's happening in here that really that really, really matters. When I feel this kind of constriction and tightening, if I just let go, I was able to let go, for example, and um, invite a board member to go to the computer and billet, bullet point some of the points in the letter, mm -hmm. which initially didn't strike me as the wisest thing to do. But when I saw it, it was, it, it was a real improvement. <laughs> in the letter, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's the simplest thing, it, it, you know, letting go is a sort of kitchen, link, uh, kitchen sink level, pragmatic and, and ordinary as being open and willing to take feedback and input and um, uh, that's, the, that's the really useful place for letting go. Mm. Yeah. Is there ever a time that um, we shouldn't let go and, and break down those 
those barriers within ourselves? Yeah, so that's a, I mean, that's a really good question. So, um, you know, there are people in abusive circumstances, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. So, um, one of the things we do in our practice is we cultivate healthy boundaries, right? Healthy and respectful boundaries. And everybody's boundaries are different, mm -hmm. right? And um, it's very important, it's very important to have a secure, settled sense of self, a wholesome, settled sense of self, a place where we can say, this is safe, I'll explore letting go, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we have to have, we have to have boundaries in order to be able to let go safely. And where those boundaries are is different for everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how, when people are seeking um, a spiritual home mm -hmm. of some sort, mm -hmm. and they're looking to Buddhism um, particularly, I mean, it could be any spiritual home, yeah. how, how does one recognize that it's a safe space to practice that? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that, I, I can give you, um, the, this is the most important sign that it's not a safe place. Okay. Uh, it's not a safe place if the spiritual leader or um, people who are senior in that um, spiritual community try to convince you that your perceptions about what's happening in that setting are um, faulty. Mm -hmm. If people are trying to convince you that your own perceptions are not to be trusted, then that's a situation that, in my opinion, is very unsafe. Mm -hmm. right? In our tradition, as I understand it, we encourage people to trust their own take on a situation and to be in conversation with others about um, what others are perceiving as well. Um, because ultimately, we're all responsible for our own progress in the practice and for uh, judging what is useful and what is not useful in our own lives in the practice. Sure. Yeah. 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 So we're talking about, you know, a few different things here. And how, you know, some people don't... Um, this is this will be their first introduction to Buddhism, right? Mm -hmm. And and um, how through the Buddhist tradition, what's the what's a few good ways to cultivate some of this letting go, some of this creating boundaries, and understanding where the um, sweet spot lies? Yeah. So uh, a wonderful place, a wonderful place to learn to let go is in meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, really, meditation is uh, as simple as just being present, having a sense of your own physical presence. And then we observe what's happening in the present moment, in the here and now present moment. So this being present to what's happening now um, will be one dimension of the experience. The other dimension of the experience, or another dimension of the experience, is the mind's tendency to wander out of, away from the present moment. And so, one of the things we immediately get to practice in terms of letting go is we get to practice letting go of this tendency of the mind to wander off into daydreams or memories or planning or fear Whatever, whatever kinds of um, experience the mind is habituated to, those are the kinds of experiences it will have if we uh, make the effort to just be present to what's happening here and now. So we get to practice right off letting go and coming back. Letting go and coming back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of setting boundaries, um, uh, I've taken vows. And I've vowed to live by precepts. And these precepts are not like the Ten Commandments in Judaism or Christianity, where they are 
handed to me from outside and then I try to conform to them. But they're more invitations to explore um, ways of living. So for example, um, I vow to use kind speech. Okay? So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What are the boundaries of that, right? What, what, um, how do I use kind speech? Do I use kind speech internally with myself? And do I speak even kindly of others in my own thoughts about others? Um, Am I able to respond kindly when someone has used unkind speech toward me, right? So, and, um, or do I remain silent, mm -hmm. right? So it, this is just one example of, you know, do I always have to speak? Is kind speech sometimes being silent? What does it mean, right? And so what I have to do is I have to explore this vow with the question, what is good for me and others in this exploration? What brings about happiness and wholesomeness and joy in the experience we're having right now in terms of speech or in terms of speaking the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So this kind of exploration is where we discover where our boundaries are. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. kind of covers the curiosity piece yeah, of yeah. appreciative recovery, right? Yeah, yeah so that's yeah. the first piece. Um, when we're meditating uh, and our mind wanders or, um, yeah, our mind wanders and we get upset with ourselves when we're not doing it perfectly. Because I've heard some people say that, I can't meditate, my mind wanders. And I'm like, <laughs> what is, you know, and um, they get angry with themselves. <laughs> so how, how does self-compassion um, play into a, a practice of meditation. Yeah, so first and foremost, there's no way to do it wrong. I mean, um, so my mind wanders and I get angry. What I, what I want to do is just simply notice, be present to what's happening here and now. So I notice my mind wandering. I notice that I get upset that I notice that my mind's wandering. <laughs> layer upon layer, right? right? But you see, knowing that I'm upset, about my mind wandering is being present to what's happening here and now, right. right? And so when I see this, when I let go, ah, this letting go is actually self-compassion, right? Because the, um, the obsessions and fi fixations of the habit mind are actually quite irritating and agitating yeah. to the mind. And letting go and coming back to the present moment when the mind is more still and more clear, this is peaceful. It's wholesome. Sure. It's still. And so self-compassion and self-knowledge, right? I'm learning. I'm learning what my fixations, my mental habits are, right? And maybe learning about what my habits are. And I'm curious about that, right? I'm interested. Right? Being present is also being interested. So I meditate with a very kind of curious and interested openness. My awareness is open to what's happening in these daydreams, plans. Mm. Um, and, and when I notice, maybe I can say, oh, I think about such and such a lot more than I ever realized. That, that's really, that problem is really important to me. Maybe I should spend some time in my life trying to manage it differently, right? right. right? And so here we have self-compassion, self-understanding, um, engendered by curiosity and interest. Right? It's all there in meditation. Sure. It's all there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how do we take um, that, as we learn that in meditation, how do we take that kind of mindfulness into our everyday life, like yeah. at work, at home, yeah, with question. the kids? And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, Zen uh, just means meditation. Huh. That's what it means. And so um, the, the goal of a Zen practitioner is to bring meditation into every corner of life. Mm -hmm. And so in our practice, we have seated meditation, and then we have walking meditation, mm -hmm. and then we have cleaning meditation, and we have cooking meditation. Right? And it's all... It's all 
done in this very kind of structural, structured way in our practice. We get together for days of practice where we eat together in meditation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just knowing when I'm eating that I'm eating. Right. Right? It's just being present to the eating. So we practice this together with friends with the uh, aspiration that we will be able to go home and practice it with our loved ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or um, with the aspiration that maybe someday our loved ones will come to the Zendo <laughs> and practice it there with us. Yeah. You know, so um, um, it's a very important part of the practice to practice seating med seated meditation, walking meditation, hand washing meditation, dish washing meditation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just recognizing, I think eventually, does it just kind of permeate into your world? If well, you one has to it? have that intention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. One so has to have that intention. You have one, to want to yeah. incorporate it off yeah. the yeah. pillow, as they say. Yeah, because the, you know, our, our ordinary habit mind, the mind that um, we grow mm -hmm. in our daily life in Western mass consumer culture, that mind is habituated to being very kind of busy and agitated and um, um, self-seeking. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't want to change. Yeah. Right? And so it's, it, it's, it has, and it has a lot of energy about it, right? And so shifting that energy takes real effort. Mm -hmm. Right? And consistency. It takes a real intention and desire to do it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's um, learning, to, learning to carry meditation into one's daily life is like, it takes the, the same kind of devotion and energy that um, would be required to reach your highest level or my highest level in tennis, for example. Hmm. Right? It's a, it's a, Which it's for me would not be very high. <laughs> yeah, and it probably wouldn't be very high for me, but you know, it would, it would involve, but reaching that level, whatever that level is, would, would involve um, playing tennis and practicing tennis and getting a tennis coach, sure. right? Um, we wouldn't expect to reach our, um, uh, a tennis life, if you will, um, by practicing or playing tennis once a month. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 So how does um, the cultivating of mindfulness and um, cultivating learning how to have boundaries or learning what boundaries are, how does that um, translate into the type of connections we have with other people? Yeah, so um, I think it's, it's very, very important for us, for each individual to have um, a sense of boundaries so we can confidently move out into the world and um, um, be fearless in the world, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's our boundaries, it's our sense of, what are we talking about when we talk about boundaries? Sure. It's a very simple thing, really. What are my values? What's important to me? What do I cherish in terms of the way I want to be treated and the way I want other people to treat me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what we mean by boundaries. Just understanding, um, you know, my desire for connection, that I value that, but I value being respected and I value um, sharing with people and a kind of mutuality and fairness in my relationships. I value um, being spoken to kindly as I speak to others kindly. Right? So when I understand this, I know as I move out into the world who I am, so to speak. Sure. Right? And knowing who I am helps me be willing to confidently build bridges to others. Mm -hmm. And um, holding on to my opinions and my sense of what I know and don't know very lightly right? Um, understanding that any view that I have is partial. Any opinion that I have is only one side of the story. Like really understanding that, right? That helps me be open 
to what other people have to say. It, it, it helps me be open to um, whether or not they'd like to see bullet points instead of paragraphs. <laughs> right? Right. And so I can let go. Yeah. So I can let go and actually learn right? and benefit from contact with other people. Right? Okay. And they can benefit from contact with me, hopefully, with me. Right? Yeah. So letting go, being curious, being interested, having a good sense of personal values, personal boundaries, sense of who I am. Yeah. Right? This is all very important as we move through the world. Yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. And in our training, this is what we we develop. And so because we all have different boundaries, a different sense of values, um, it's not important to us in Zen practice that everyone agree on everything. Right, because you, right? be, you can stand firm in, in your values. That's right. Rather you than can, your thoughts and beliefs. Yeah, you can be who you are, right? right? Yeah. And be open, right? Understanding that I don't have the whole story, right? right? And being curious about what the whole story might be. Yeah. 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 I'll tell a little story. Okay. So, um, in our tradition, there's um, there is a, a history of um, recorded encounters between teachers and students, Zen teachers and Zen students. And um, um, one of the kind of stylized and repeated stories is a, a student will come to a teacher and say, "What is Buddha?" <laughs> And the teacher will say, what? <laughs> right? What? Yeah. What? What? Right? This question, this, op this the, the very thing, the very thing that caused that question to arise, that openness that you would come and ask, right? The curiosity, right? That you would come and ask, what? That's Buddha. What? Right, that openness yeah, yeah. to the other, right, and to, to being informed and being filled. The emptiness of being willing to say, what, <laughs> what, why? Right. right, right, right. So in the Korean Sun Zen tradition, students at the monastery are often given a question that they're going to work on for their whole, they're going to sit with this question, they're going to contemplate this question, they're going to live with this question for the rest of their life, every day for the rest of their life. Yeah. And one of the most common questions the student is given is, what is it? <laughs> right. And there's really, is there no, really no answer? Well, <laughs> as soon Let's, as you get an answer, you can ask, what, what is, is it? it? Yeah. I think that is a perfect way to yeah. end, what mm. is it? Yeah. Leaving our audience with a little bit of a question. So. Um, why don't you share with our audience the um, website mm -hmm. of Sweet Me? So it is simply sweepingheartzen.org. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, they can find the hours of. Um, yeah, we have our, uh, a calendar there. Our homepage is the uh, calendar. Okay. Uh, and the blog is uh, there in the navigation bar. Fantastic. So you can find the blog there. You can also find us. We have a Facebook page, so right. you can find us on Facebook, Sweeping yeah. Hearts Zen. Yeah, they should like you on Facebook. Like us. All right. Um, well, I want to thank you very much for joining us today, and, and Mark for joining us. Thank and you. Um, you can find Appreciative Recovery at www.appreciativerecovery.org. And um, in you know a few days, a week, you can find this um, interview. I know it's not an interview, it's a conversation. But So thank you very much for joining us today.